Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of Chewing the Fat. Uh, today we're gonna to talk about pinion depth, but before we do, it is Women's March Day and I just wanna give a special shout out to the real women of America, and that's the Bronco wives and the Bronco girlfriends. You know, those lovely ladies who pretend to believe us when we say, oh, it'll only be another 20 minutes in the garage, honey, or who look away when our bank accounts drain a little bit every month. Thank you, ladies, especially Mrs. Matt's garage. Now, pinion depth. Whew, man, I have learned so much in the last three weeks, and I just want to dump my knowledge onto you guys, but it's coming out in a jarbled mess, so I'm gonna back it up, start from the basics. What is pinion depth? So, you got your ring gear going around, right? And your axles to your wheels. So, my head is in the plane of the ring gear, right? And the pinion, as this spins like this, the pinion's spinning like this coming from the engine, right? It's just the depth inside the carrier. That's all pinion depth is. How deep it sits inside the carrier, and it's determined by shims in Dana 44s and 49 inches in different ways, but it's shimmed to get to the appropriate depth. What I want you to take away from this video is get a solid measurement of your pinion depth before you take it out of your axle. Your stock pinion depth, or however it came as it is right now before you still do your regeared, take the stock measurement. That is the mistake I made. I had my gears apart, my axles apart, and a subscriber, James Mitchell, he shot me a message and he said, Matt, what are you doing for pinion depth? I told him I was planning on, I'd seen somewhere in some video you could measure off of the bearing surfaces, so I said I was gonna try that. I tried it, forget it. No way. I mean, it's just, unless you have special machinist flats, I, I, I can't do it. Maybe you can, I can't. So I ordered the Raytech tools, uh, one zero R A T E C H Raytech, uh, one zero zero one one and one zero zero one three for the Dana forty four and the four nine inch. Don't remember which. You can look it up. I ordered them. It's like it's about that big. It's small. It's smaller than you'd think. It's about that big, and it um, is it just a piece of metal that is bent in a certain way depending on your axle, and it sits on your pinion head and it swivels to some fixed point like uh, the bolt hole for your bearing cap or the edge where your seal sits and then there's a hole in that the arm you stick a dial indicator through that or a depth gauge i'm sorry and you take that measurement and then there's a number written on the tool and you figure out okay based on that number you subtract this number you take the pinion, pinion head width uh, depth and the you know you can come to a pinion depth but that's, that's not how I would use it. How I would use it is you order the Raytech tool, and before you take your pinion out of your carrier or your axle housing, in the case of the Dana 44, set up that Raytech tool on top of your pinion head after you take the ring gear out, obviously. Measure it like five times, and you gotta measure till you're getting really close, because a thousandth goes a long way in this, you know, in, in this type of work. So, uh, close is not really good enough. So, you know, get five measurements that are within a few thousandths of each other, take the average. That is what you wanna set your new pinion depth to, okay? Not permanently, I mean, but it's gonna get you close enough to check your pattern. The mistake I made was, I watched a lot of videos and article, read a lot of articles about doing this, and, you know, they all said, oh, the pinion head will have the measurement on it, right? Well. My Yukon Dana 44 had 006 or 900, I couldn't tell which, written on it. And the 49 inch had 105 written on it. So I literally tried to set my pinion depth to those numbers, only later to realize those numbers mean nothing. Diddly squat. All they do is match to the ring gear. So if the ring gear says 105, the pinion will say 105, you make sure they match, and disregard it after that. There's no use to those numbers. Now Richmond gear will say some number. I think some gears will say like, plus 0.04, which means you want it to be four thousandths more shim than your stock. And there's like a nominal depth, which is what the factory says it should be in the ideal controlled location, and it'll be close to that. But in any case, that's where I went wrong, was trying to figure out what that Yukon number went. So when I do the Ford 9-inch setup, I start way out, and you see it in my pattern. That video will be out February 9th. And with the Dana 44, again, I was way out. I finished the whole install, just kind of not feeling right about it, but I couldn't, I'd set it up like 20 times. And then at the end I was like, after I'd gotten everything assembled, I'm like, no, this is not right. I can feel it's not right. 
my knowledge started forming together and I figured out what I was doing wrong. Um, I ended up taking all that apart. It's in pieces right now, but I know what I did wrong. I'm setting my new pinion to the old pinion depth by recreating the old pinion shim stack and I'll finish that when I get home. I just hope you guys don't go through the same learning curve. I hope this video prevents you from going through that same learning curve. Because if had it not been for that, it wasn't that bad. And that's the other message I want you to take from this video is, you can do your own gears, okay? I mean, I shouldn't say that because I don't know you. You know, maybe you're like uh, Don Knotts with a, with a wrench, you know? But if you have any mechanical capability, the tools are not that expensive especially compared to paying somebody to do it. The rebuild kit from Tom's, a couple hundred bucks. Oh, make sure you get the master rebuild kit because the regular rebuild kit doesn't come with the slingers and all that, and you want those slingers, you're gonna need them. And you know, the copper washers for the Ford 9-inch, you want all that stuff. You don't, you don't wanna reuse that stuff unless you just rebuilt it, okay? So get the master kit from Tom's. So you can do it yourself, right? You need a torque wrench, an inch pound torque wrench, you need a pretty big torque wrench for the pinion nut, like a 250 pound or two, so yeah, depending on it, camera. I'm getting it mixed up in my head, but more than 150, which is what I have. Uh, you need a dial indicator, a digital caliper with depth gauge, a base, magnetic base for the dial indicator, a cheap spanner wrench, which I'll show you in a, in a video coming up, and uh, yeah, I'm not that many tools, you know. If it's not like your daily driver or something, just do it. You can do it, man. I'm telling you, they make it seem like a mystery, but it's literally four settings. Pinion depth, backlash, and then the preload on your pinion and the preload on your ring gear. That's it. It's four settings. I mean, your radio has more than four settings. Okay, I'm exaggerating a bit, but you, you know my point. So. If you if you if you toyed with the idea but then thought nah everyone says I shouldn't do it do it I'm telling you you can do it and if you have any questions email me at mattsgaragehow at gmail.com if I don't know I'll give you to somebody who does or I'll tell you forget about it or I'll walk you through it or whatever we'll figure it out man we will figure it out don't give somebody your money go do it yourself and then you'll be like the most popular guy in your Bronco club you know what I'm saying plus the Bronco wife will think you're you know you're like a manly man. So that's my tip, that's my discussion. Email me if you have any thoughts or arguments or comment down below. And I'll see you next time on Matt's Garage.